life on the road. It's booze, tacos, angry dwarfs, strippers waving guns, and bees, fights, cancel flights, running with the runs, and blacklists, bounce checks, great at bachelorette, drunks in the front, making out for your set, and middle acts doing blow more, missing merch, and drive the rental car past another mega church, and juice keys, vagina fist, your cell phone is gone, one big law and order marathon. Ah, thanks for tuning the Road Stories podcast. There is actually 29 seconds. I thought it was 30 seconds, the theme song, but I just looked on the counter. It's 29 seconds. That's so it was only song. part of the theme song. It wasn't the full theme song. Yeah. If you want the extended version, you got to go to my album and go for the bonus track. I put it in track number 69 because I'm clever. Uh, thanks great for the theme song. I love it. <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, you... I don't think you had it last time, did you? No, yeah, it's oh. been a while. Um, let's check in. Hold, hold that thought. Let's check in with Aaron over at the All, All Things Comedy Desk. What's going on over there today? Uh, Tom Papa just put out a special on Epics called Human Mule. Oh, right. The I, album will be available uh, next Friday. I haven't watched it yet, but I tweeted about it. I like Tom Papa. He's a funny dude. He's Yeah, it's crazy mm-hmm. how funny he is. Jerry Seinfeld loves him. That's what I've heard. Okay. <laughs> That's it? That's All Things going over there? Yeah. And we all love and know Epics. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we all tune in. I get my epics. Are you talking about the uh, disco record label? Yeah, I, epics, don't know what, yeah. I don't know what epics is. Epics, I guess, is a channel. It's like HBO. is it an online channel? Yeah, I think they have a deal with Amazon though, so you might be able to find it there as well. Oh, okay, I don't know. That's also incestuous. There's so many things. Now. Get my news from epics. Hard, hard hitting epics news. Yeah, it's almost like all these ways. To watch things online is maybe just turning to television, but I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, joining me today on the podcast, uh, two very funny guys I'm very excited to have on. I haven't had on in a long time. Chris Fairbanks and Henry Phillips. Hey. That's me. And, yeah. and him. And that's me. That's both of you guys. Yeah. It's funny you're here because I didn't have the theme song last time you were here, Henry. Maybe not the last time you were here also, no. but... You, somebody asked me uh, where I came up with all the lyrics for the pot, uh, for the theme song, and it comes from every story. So yeah. if you listen to every line, it's somebody mm. told the story on here, and you have the last line in it, um, a, a one big law and order marathon. Oh, wow. Yeah, because that, that one really spoke to me. <laughs> I was like, wow. I can it relate. Jumped right off the page or the <laughs> podcast. Last time you were on, or, or, or you had mentioned all you do is you sit and, and you just watch Law and Order. And I was there's, there's one like, wow, you really nailed it on that one. That's really funny. It's like listening to a song and it just coming out and saying your brother's wife's name or something like that. It's like, what? That's so specific. So I guess if I, you got you to gotta step it up to make it into the next version. Oh, yes. yeah, the pressure's on, Murray. <laughs> How have you been? I feel like I haven't seen you, both of you guys in... Quite a long yeah, time, Yeah, it's man. been a little while. It's funny when someone tells me to step it up. I'm just like, I'm, uh, I just give up. That's amazing. I'm the opposite <laughs> of competitive. Like, when oh, the going okay. gets tough, I say, <laughs> screw <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good. Good. Yep. I'm trying to figure out. I'm. I'm. I'm I never. Uh, let's. I'm going to try and figure out where we met. But all three of us here, and I'm going to rack my brain. I haven't thought about this. I, I wrote down notes because I want to talk to you guys about something, but this is not it. Uh. Chris and I met at a theater in Long Beach uh, next to a Walmart. I think I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> Come was, on, that, step uh, it up. was that step Jackie it up. Cation's show? She I was think doing so. A show Jackie Cation booked it, I think. Yeah, I remember that. And it was a little black box theater, but yeah. it was next to a, it was attached to a Walmart. How do you guys 10 years do ago? this? Is it just images that come back? Or how does it <laughs> Well, because how, how many gigs are there in Long Beach? In a Walmart. Yeah. God, I have Nothing? no recollection. Nothing? Yeah. I mean, I, you might have just been, I say new to town, but I don't, how long have you been here? 2003? Yeah. You might have been a couple of years. about 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you had a buzzed head. Oh, yeah, that does go back. That was, that was my buzzed head tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> how did that work out for you? Yeah, yeah. Very intimidating. Lots of fights? You were oh, ahead of it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it didn't really get big until late 2000s. Yeah, yeah. I saw the uh, cutting edge. But we go say. crew cut though. We didn't. You didn't go full skin. I don't want to. I, I don't want to set an image that. you Well, didn't. May, it's just you never know how what stage you got me in. I, <laughs> before that, I was all the way, all the way bald. Were you full skin? Yeah, thin. Uh, I was hanging out with these guys. They were kind of racist, <laughs> and uh, was, the music was terrible. Oh, really? Man. Yeah, 
it's like the dancing was just punching and we uh-huh. had these rallies and that okay. was all blur. Did you wear a bunch of you wear red suspenders? Uh no, shoelaces. Oh, no. shoelaces. Yeah, we it. were the non-racist version. <laughs> I love the different <laughs> types of skinheads where they're like, "Oh, no, no, we're not racist skinheads. We look at my shoelaces." Yeah, yeah. We're was... moderately racist. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. just kind of like are are not big fans of uh rap music or there something. is yeah. yeah there is like there is group of a group called sharps with skinheads against racial president sure right? you you're fighting it by looking like them that's how you sneak <laughs> out on them oh that's good yeah. i remember hanging out with a bunch of non-racist skinheads and they get really pissed that's what i'm when trying you ask to by a bunch i mean three so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm trying to do with square middle-aged white guys I'm trying to get them from within yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we met, you and I met. I don't, re- I can't recall where we met. I feel like but, it was uh, in front of Stratton's in Westwood. Oh, I don't know what Stratton's with, is. With the uh, Hardwick. Remember, we used to hang out down there. Remember uh, Stratton, Westwood Boulevard? Come on, Murray, step it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm retreating in my shell. Um, Stratton's? What's Stratton's? Madison's? Chris Hardwick used to hang out there all the, bar. the time. Yeah, Madison's. The bar. Oh, I'm sorry. It was called Stratton's before that. Oh, it was? When I okay. Was UCLA. All right. Back when <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris was a skinhead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, then they changed the name of it. But yeah, I feel like it was there. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Chris used to hang out there all the time, and then uh, I was hanging out, and you were there too. And then yeah, uh, yeah. we just wound up chatting the whole night. And then, yeah, and then since then, I've hung out at the, the improv and sure. uh, in the comedy scene. You weren't there the night I, I almost got into a fist fight, were you? I don't think so. This no. was horrible. All right, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You started getting in a fist fight, and I started running away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember now. By the way, if you want to. <laughs> now I remember if you ever, there. If you ever want to get anybody to back you up, <laughs> yeah. don't have comics. Mm-hmm. You, might, you might still have the marching band backing you up. I'll go get help. <laughs> what happens? All right, the waitress gave my credit card to the wrong person. And by the way, it's one minute to two where they got to clear everybody out at 2 a.m. And yeah. she gave my credit card to somebody else. And they're, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Here, go to the phone and call your credit card and tell them to stop it. So I go to the phone and call, and call my credit card company. And some guy who was working there who wasn't working there that night was drunk. And they're trying to clear everybody out and clear everybody out. And he goes, hey, asshole, you got to get out of here and hangs up the phone on me. Whoa. Like right when I get to my credit card. And oh, so I wow. snap. So I'm, I'm, plus I'm drunk. <laughs> so oh, yeah, I, yeah. I snap. And well, the guy didn't gets have a, to call you an asshole. I know. And hang up the phone. Out of here, asshole. <laughs> so <laughs> him and his buddies just come at me, and I go at them, and I look behind me, and this is all, this is who I remember. Riley Newton. I don't know if you remember her. Oh, sure. yeah. A, yeah. a very nice lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blaine Capatch weighs uh, 85 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> Zach Galifianakis is passed out face down. And Hardwick is just hammered somewhere. So yeah, I got yeah. five frat guys coming at me and everybody behind me. Wow. So that was the last time I almost got into a fight. Wow. So they didn't end up punching no, you? No, they held it like they held it back. Like it was literally like I had I had fists clenched and and back of out of self defense, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. It's a shame we don't hang out there anymore. Yeah, those I actually uh, well, you know, I went to college at UCLA and that was always the place to go. As a matter of fact, I used to go there before I was even at UCLA. And um, just to hang out on campus, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was crazy. There'd be girls uh, in the men's bathroom. What? <laughs> this is like North Carolina. Bring up. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's not like that was a thing that happened all the time. I just suddenly a memory flashed in my head about that happening one time. Just I was casually, very, yeah, I was very like they were just hanging out, like smoking. Even I think you could smoke back in, back in those days. Maybe in the men's bathroom, it was more comfortable <laughs> to smoke. The, the men's bathroom <laughs> had they didn't, yeah, yeah, they didn't want to mess up the the women's bathroom with smoke. So they, Historically yeah. speaking, yeah. men's bathrooms are very comfortable. And, yeah, I yeah. remember <laughs> being offended. I I complained to the management about. There isn't a hit song called "Smoking in the Girls' Room." Uh-huh. <laughs> I there's yeah. a a hit. There's song. there's one. Uh, <laughs> Banana Rama has a song called "Why Don't They Have Ashtrays in the." That's bathroom. I thought that's a Bengals. Wow. Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> this is the so Hardwick was like best friend. They went to school. They went to UCLA together. The guy who ran this bar. Oh, and so, okay. And so there was a what was the place across the street? Yeah, he used, that used to, to hang do there. It was always after the uh, the Bruco. The Bruco, right? yeah. the Bruco, or the Gypsy. That we'd always go up there. Yeah, then the we gypsy. go up there and we get hammered. And I remember one. This is the type of clientele you get at this bar. I remember one Halloween, Hardwick and I were there, and everybody was dressed up. 
And one guy walk, you know, one guy, he's high school, you know, just uh, high school, college, just buff, no shirt and a towel and like foam on his head, you know, like he just got out of the shower, you know, and then on his, on his back, he had posted a post-it note that had an arrow on his butt that said exit only. Whoa. Just that real type of jock homophobic. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah, oh. wow. But we drank for free, so we went there. Also, <laughs> he's probably trying to use reverse psychology. That's usually what they're doing. Yeah, they're doing yeah. That. Why talk about it if you don't want it real bad? Yeah, Chet. yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't Chet, do me in the Chet butt. Chet. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody do that. <laughs> Certainly not three times in an evening. <laughs> I'll <Yeah>. be mad. <laughs> <laughs> don't put this ball gag that I already have on me in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> that was unacceptable. <laughs> I, th- I do remember seeing you in, uh, in Stanhope. At Luna Park. Oh, yeah, yeah. Years and years. Right when I first started Luna out. Luna Park was, that was like a haven. That place was fantastic. That place was great. It was a little that would have been like restaurant 90, bar. 97, 96, 98, something like that. Ooh, it had to be closer to 98, I think. Yeah, there were some really fun ones there. Um, yeah, and Stanhope. I remember specifically this uh, Aspen Comedy Showcase, and it was the dumbest thing because they, they were auditioning people for Aspen, and... Doug Stanhope, they thought it would be a great idea to have him as the MC, but he wasn't <laughs> eligible to be in the. They just had already rejected him to be in the festival right, because right. he was too dirty or whatever. Sure, but they were like, "Can you host it for us?" <laughs> Which is just a crazy idea. Yeah. And he was his entire set was it was so over the top hardcore that it right. was making everybody want it. You know, all the industry people squirm, and <laughs> he was also insulting the comics after they went on. It's like, oh, that's always a great thing to do. Do crowd rap in front of a bunch of industry people, you idiot. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it was just hilarious. <laughs> it's like, what do you do, sir? Uh, I sit in the dark and judge you. Now go on with your stupid dog and pony show so we can get on. With... Like, I remember <laughs> just like, it was just so great. But um, And then afterward, there was a lot of partying. <laughs> but yeah, Luna Park was just that was a f- haven. Were you around for that? You probably missed that. No, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, that's in Austin. It, it was. was uh, uh, I used to open for a show called the Butt Pirates of the Caribbean. I remember was, that uh, imp- the improv sketch yeah, show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was. Uh, or it was a musical. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, that was in the big room, and that was crazy. Yeah, there was like celebrities that would come in and everything, and. Uh, and then there was the downstairs room where they had comedy, and yeah. uh, I remember Uncabaret was the big. Oh right, there. right, yeah. That place was—I mean, low ceilings, yeah. a bar. It was really cool. Uh, I don't know if you could smoke in there, and I don't remember. Probably. I mean, that's something we forget is that until about '98 or something, there was no bar that you couldn't smoke. In. Yeah, there, yeah. There would never be. They never even thought about it. They never said, "No, we're going to ban smoke." Like, yeah. it was such a. Are you still smoking? Uh, you know, every now and then I'll have a little bit of, uh, an e-cigarette. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some water. Yeah, Man, when so, I first worked with Henry on the road, we both smoked. And it's so funny, it wasn't that long ago, but oh, yeah. I remember just smoking in well, hotel that was like, rooms. Uh, that was like, like, Like waking up and smoking. Yeah. We did that Tulsa gig, right? Oh, oh my God. Man. Yeah, we had some stories. Henry was that. on stage, and the, the guy that runs the club... Who's died, right? He has yeah, passed Randy, away. Yeah, but he was the worst. Yeah, he was the worst. It's one of those, it's, it feels so terrible after someone dies for you to have not, like, oh, he was a good guy, but I can't make myself say <laughs> no, it. No, yeah, was, I think his wife always had, like, a black eye, too. Yeah, Jeez. and they lived, you, they put you in a condo, and he lived across the street, and his kids would come over. Remember, his kids <laughs> with, with, like, no pants on, yeah. running around. <laughs> And Henry was on stage, and he had gotten all tuned up at the uh, Larry the Cable Guy show, which he went to instead of the show at his own. The club. owner, yeah. And Henry is on stage, and he just got on stage and pulled his pants down and mooned the audience. <laughs> yeah. And what did you say? You were yeah, there. and I was like, "Well, normally they kick that guy out, but that's the owner of the place." So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we're screwed. Yeah. God, what a um, terrible. Yeah. Oh, what man. an awful place. And I then, went yeah, there again. Tulsa. I got punched in the face after a show there, slow in slow motion what? for having a no war in Iraq uh, poster on my back window. It was my girlfriend's car, and I borrowed it, and I didn't realize she put a giant banner in the back. It was behind the driver's car of the window, so <laughs> like, I didn't honey, see Honey, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and people were honking and flipping me off the closer I got to Tulsa. 
because it was a time where you were really supposed to. Don't you wish you could go back in time, and, time and say now both candidates both agree that it was a stupid idea. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. It's like even your you know hardcore you know right wing you know is like it was a stupid idea. It's like. Well, why don't you tell all those assholes yeah. that were going around <laughs> kicking everybody's ass? Yeah, this old guy after the show was just, he was even saying, oh, I thought you were great, and then saw that, and he got in my face, and I said, you're the type of person that is angry right now. That, that's just the difference between you and I. And he, yeah. he like, pushed punch. He was old. So like, have you ever had an old man hit you? Just my dad. So strange. Yeah. If it was my dad, I'd be like, well, you just love me and don't know how to show it. But this guy was a stranger. <laughs> and he pushed, he just made a fist and pushed my chin with it. So it wasn't really, he wanted to hit me. So he's just showing me where he would have done it. And then applying the slow motion. Well. pressure. If I have uh, like, you ever get swung out? You'd be terrible at war, I told him. Well, I mean, not since high school. <laughs> well, <laughs> in high school, yeah, but no, not not as an adult. No. Not on stage. Now, didn't you? Tell oh, oh, no. Or I off mean, stage. Uh, I think people have probably thrown things. Yeah. Did you have a bunch I, of I, chairs thrown I, at you one time? Oh yeah, yeah. I I had a football thrown at me at one of these college gigs. It was mm -hmm. pretty hilarious. It, it literally, I was in the middle of my song, and it just. Uh, bounced off my head. And I just I just ignored it. <laughs> I just kept on going. It bounced off the top of my head. Wow. Um, yeah, that was awful. I hated those college gigs. Can you tell I'm a musician? I have no athletic skills. Don't throw. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't want to. Well, and also you're playing guitar and doing an act supposedly. What uh, are you still doing? Colleges? <laughs> um, no, 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 I haven't done those in years. What about you? Are you still doing colleges? I don't even want to go on the road anymore. No? You don't? No. Once the map lit up all red during the uh, election, I was like, ah, I'm not going to go to these towns anymore. Really? Just decided not to. Yeah. No more? Yeah. Hmm. Fuck those people. All right. Fuck most everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. So why go? I don't want to go and try and make those people laugh. I'm done. I'm well, there's a lot town. of cool places, you know. Plenty of things you can do with comedy other than... Go to some shithole for $900. And yeah, go. but some no of way. these places are starting to, you know. They're all terrible, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like uh, I like uh, Louisville, Kentucky a lot. Uh, oh, you've always I liked like that Peoria. place. I've always liked you Louisville. <laughs> you've always liked Louisville. I uh, remember hanging out at Madison's. You're like, one day I'm going to Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually, I, I never really worked there um, until a couple years ago. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's great. It's totally, you know. Is that the caravan? They're like... Uh, no, it's called the uh, Laughing Derby. Oh. And uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, and it's great. Um, they've got they, you know, have like a cool little. A lot of these places have like their own kind of hate Ashbury look, you know, mm -hmm. with like the vinyl record stores and smoke shops and stuff like that. And it's you know pretty progressive in the urban areas. You know, it's not like you're going to the Appalachian. Right. Well, I don't know Kentucky. Yeah. But um, yeah, I like a lot of these places. But you, uh, you here's know, my is. here's my. I took notes. Here's they aren't asking me. Law and order. Scratch yeah. it off. Yeah, <laughs> done. Uh, do you open? Do you open for bands much? Did you? Uh, I've done it before. I haven't done that in quite a while. Yeah. How do they yeah. respond to? Oh man, there was one. Uh, there was one situation where I was in uh, Myrtle Beach and I was open up for a band called. Uh, Three Doors Down. Oh, yeah. And uh, What was their hit? Um, oh, hold on, Aaron has taste in shitty music. Kryptonite. Was Kryptonite, yeah. You still yeah. call me Superman! Yeah, I think their bass player or somebody Jesus, just died. The worst. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, there was... I'm sure he's a good guy. There was just all these people. There was, like... Uh, I think it was a... Yeah, it was it's some rock venue. I want to say House of Blues, but I don't think it was that. But it was that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. it was just... I was up there trying to do my stand up and my guitar and everything and like the first all I could see really were the first 10 rows and I just remember people's faces just so angry just like fuck you fuck you you know just going like that and but I did it you know cuz it was a good paycheck sure so yeah when I was done I uh walked off stage and uh the people from the radio that were promoting it were like, that was awesome. Dude, that was great. And I was like, what? What about it? The fact that everybody was yelling, fuck you. 
And they're like, no, 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 they do that for everybody. And I'm like, all right, well, maybe everybody sucks. So <laughs> yeah. You can't like just assume it's good. But uh, yeah, and then I thought it was pretty funny because uh, afterward there was this entire group of um, <coughs> girls that looked like uh, Hooters type girls, and mm-hmm. they were all just lined up to go to go back to the bus with the band. And uh, the band came out and just sort of picked which ones that they wanted. Really? And grabbed them. Yeah. It's um, funny. Now those guys can't even get Hooters girls to no. approach them at a Hooters. <laughs> they get kicked out. <laughs> I love that Three Doors they Down say, has very say, violent fans. Asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think uh, it's more some of these towns, you know, like when they go to a rock concert, they get so pumped up mm-hmm. and uh, the kind of dry... Uh, comedic stylings of uh, whatever I do is not really what they're looking for. Yeah, I've never had it work to open for a band. No. It's Didn't, a terrible who idea. Was it, who was it you opened for? Who, the first opening? Who? Cindy Lauper? Yeah, I kind of <laughs> told that story, but we are in that zone. I right. just know I, I ate it, and I was told to get off stage, and I was terrible things were yelled at me. At Cindy Lauper. <laughs> so it's yeah. just people. It's not the band. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, they got aggro as if they were at death metal show they yeah just, you could be at a neil sadaka you concert. can't <laughs> fuck you you fucking prick <laughs> yeah you can't surprise people with comedy <laughs> all of a sudden and then afterwards yeah i ate were they throwing stuff at you i just was hungry and i did bad uh some things were thrown i didn't really stop to look at what they were <laughs> but i think just like pieces of popcorn bags or whatever it was mm. that a whatever at the concert and then afterwards i i was like i they fired me right when I got off stage, and I was like, yeah, that's what I would have done. <laughs> and then I was like, I was promised a meal, and then they just stared at me and took me down this hallway, and there was that what was left over of like a buffet situation, but it was all picked over right. and old. It was like hours old, and there was just lettuce. I remember lettuce and some ball, like cheese balls and some dressing, and I just made a cheese ball salad, <laughs> and they all were just staring at me, these roadies. <laughs> Waiting for me to eat. I could. I had to stay in town and go back to get my check. They didn't want to pay me. Oh, but I wow. got down to the fifth or sixth cheese ball on this salad when I realized I was eating butter. It was little <laughs> butter balls. Oh. Like they had rolls that weren't there anymore. Oh, so I, ate, I ate five or six of those butter yeah. balls. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So wait, they wouldn't pay you? And I was. it was a point in my life where I was like kind of healthy and I threw them out. I threw them out. All of this in front of those people. Really threw up? I was up like, I'm not going to keep those in my body and you guys fired me, so I'm going to throw up in this trash can now. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was the way. It was, God, what a great gig. That was supposed <laughs> to be a string of dates, like opening for Cindy Lauper. That was like right. going to take care of things for I a just while. picture all this happening while she's singing True Colors in the background. <laughs> well, yeah, didn't you tell... Yeah, I think you also mentioned that like... The the show itself didn't go well, right? And then I think Cindy Lauper heard about it, and at one point she's walking past the green room and looks in there and just sees you throwing up with a trash can. <laughs> and didn't you hear her say, like, oh, is that the guy? <laughs> like, as if that's the reason you're throwing up, just because you had a terrible stage fright about it. <laughs> oh, he must have had a terrible set. Just throwing up butter. I don't know if she ever looked at me while I was doing oh. stand-up. Yeah. Or no, in the green room afterward or backstage. I, there, I, it's funny when someone, oh, didn't this also happen? And then you realize at one point maybe you lied to your friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't remember that. No, no, all. I'm definitely a fan of Maybe that. it happened. I'd rather think that it happened and you forgot. Yeah. I think he told me right after. I want to pay like one of my listeners to go back and listen to my first pod and listen to them th- all the way through because I've repeated, you know, it's oh, yeah, I'm here yeah. every see week. I've the repeated the story. I want to see how it's escalated throughout the nine years that one story is. Well, like, you got to make it entertaining. So all of a sudden there's this punchline yeah. in there that was something you made up. It's like, because stories in general. Or you'll combine stories. Like for example, here's a great way it happens. Like I did a I did a show in Nashville, and backstage they were we were sharing uh, the theater with a group in the big theater that was doing Wicked. Okay. So, but we were sharing the backstage, so every time I went backstage, there would be these flying monkey guys just running around frantically, you know. <laughs> but so that would be a good way to combine that. Like like Chris, you can have that. Like you can be like, oh yeah, and then also the theater was attached to this wicked thing where they had flying monkeys and now you've got flying monkeys in yeah, your yeah. Cindy Lauper story and, and the, you're like, not really lying you're just taking two yeah, moments because yeah. uh, why wouldn't you want flying monkeys in this story and yeah. attach that theater to a Walmart yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
when it all comes around. Where uh, Law and Order is playing. Yeah. On the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> and the owner's showing his ass. It's like everything. The one night, everything happens. The one bad night of stand-up. Yeah. Now, how was it? You and uh, April just spent a lot of time together, didn't you? April Richardson? Uh, yeah, just we had hosted a show together and then it got canceled. But then you got on the road? No, we, I guess we did some shows. Yeah. It wasn't really. It, am I upsetting you? I, I really am like, to, uh, to, I don't want to do the road anymore. <laughs> that's I'm, there's other that's ways fine. to make did, a living uh, doing stand up. You can stay good at stand up and f- make money other ways. Then I'm tired of flying somewhere and sure being enough. disrespected. So I'm over it. All right. Yeah, I'm deciding that right now. All right, right. Oh, yeah, now? we did shows together. They were fine. <laughs> it was. We went to a few cities, but I've never gone on like a tour where you do like ten cities in a row. Oh, so I thought I'd that's never what you guys call, did. Everyone calls them tours, but yeah, if someone's doing, did that, you do go? Bananas? They're a famous person, or they're doing shitty gigs where mm-hmm. they're not actually making money, right? They're and they're just listing them all so they can tell people they went on the road, <laughs> or they could be the opening act. I toured with Stanhope, but I certainly wouldn't say that I was. Right. On touring. Yeah, I I opened for uh, Daniel Tosh a few times, but I wouldn't say I went on tour. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things that, like, friends of yours that aren't in the business, like friends from high school. So are you on tour now? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's call it being on tour. I'm at a, you know, bar. Well, but you can't, like, I just did a tour. No, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. You can. I, I guess that it's... Well, for me, it's always been just if a club calls me, then I show up. Right, right. Well, yeah, there's, yeah. I don't know. really have like a like a T-shirt that's got you know February seventeen, you know eighteen. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't know how you'd make enough money. You know? Yeah, I maybe. Yeah, I don't know how it gets done. If other people are doing it, maybe I'm not as popular in comedy yeah, yeah. as I thought. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. But did you do go bananas when you were there? Did you no. go bananas? <laughs> uh, when I, I went was there, sorry, I don't. Um, yeah, I didn't. I haven't you been did, to uh, Cincinnati in a long time. I think you went to Bloomington. That's supposed to be like that's like the big. Uh, Is that the attic? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just went. Have you done that? that? I haven't done the attic. Paid nothing. Got my check. Left pissed off. Had great shows. It just doesn't make sense. Well, I've had the best year great. money wise of right. my life, and it's by staying in town. <laughs> I think I talked to you right after the attic. Oh, yeah. Because I remember you saying that exact same thing yeah. to me. Shows were great. I got paid nothing and I'm yeah, pissed. Yeah, yeah. The clubs don't want to pay anymore. Well, I think that like the costs of doing it have gone way up too. Like the, the yeah. flight costs. Absolutely. Are down, which I don't get because they'll be like, you know, oh, it's because of fuel or whatever, or it's because people aren't, they're afraid to fly. But it's like, well, the fuel costs go down and then right. all of a sudden you're on a flight and every single person is on their pack like sardines so it's like well why is it going up still but um yeah it makes it so that it's really difficult uh to pull off no i know? just i believe it or not i got asked to do few dates i don't know if it's a tour or not <laughs> in canada and they're like oh this is what uh, this is what we're paying canadian and then i did the math and the exchange, you know, it's like 72 cents on the mm. dollar or something yeah, for yeah. America. And I'm like, there's no possible way I can get up to Canada and, and do yeah, this. I pulled yeah. out of my last Canada gig, so I'm like, I'm not doing this. Sorry. And they were mad, and I probably won't ever be asked back. Yeah, well, that's the other thing that pisses me off about pulling out. I got, I got a booker. I, I, got, I, was, I was doing New York and New Jersey and going through Pennsylvania. And, a, and New York and New Jersey canceled. And so I had to pull out of Pennsylvania plenty of time mm-hmm. and i think i was doing i was middling as a favor for my friend and the guy got really pissed off he's like you'll never work here again I'm like if you can't find, <laughs> if you can't find a middle act for your club yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that's, three weeks that's you, ridiculous. Yeah, you're pretty hurting yeah. but it's like what do you want me to go eat you know a grand in airfare and make whatever it was 500 bucks oh, yeah. to middle for a buddy as a favor Oh, that's crazy. No, yeah, I'm not doing it. Fairbanks is rubbing off on me. Fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> well, I'm done. Yeah. I'm gonna sell another TV show. Forget it. I yeah. quit. Yeah, that's what you should. Well, be doing. I think that if yeah, if there were a way, yeah, because I I I started that uh, this year. I started doing a lot of other things in mm-hmm. town, and um, I was like. Am I making more money by not being not working? <laughs> like how is that? Because of all the plane costs and everything, right, right. I was like, why do I feel like I have more expendable cash right now? And I'm not working. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no. If you can 
Well, the I, the goal is to eventually show up and have at least half of the audience be there specifically to see you. Right. And then it, then all the shows are great, and, and then the, the only money works out. way you, you can know. get that to happen is by being known from a thing that you have to stay in exactly. LA to yeah. be to known do. from. Right. Yeah, no, there's so many fantastic You don't comics. get, do you know how much work it would take and how often you'd have to go and have them bring you to a club for you to build an audience from doing stand-up there? It's mm-hmm. not. Oh, no. I, you know, my... I saw this guy last time. I remember his name. Let's go to his website. There's a link. No one's ever done that. They just <laughs> blindly go. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It's a flawed system, and I'm, I'm tired of it. And I know this is a podcast that's celebrating it, but yeah. I'm well, in that case, if I it's road stories, we should briefed. talk about. Remember when we did. Uh, oh, we, I have the road stories. We got to talk, <laughs> we gotta talk <laughs> I about. I tried to uh, get it to him, but we got to talk yelling about at me. <laughs> Little Rock. Little Rock. Remember that one? We did a whole week at this, it was sort of an improv slash funny bone in Little Rock, mm. Arkansas. The minute I showed up, I just had a roommate. I, the roommate was like the house MC that month, and I walked in the condo in his wet socks and underwear. Oh, is this Sam? There was like a moat on the floor that he had created, and he was just playing video games. He had dealt with the issue as far as he was concerned, but the toilet had overflowed, and he used his dirty socks and underwear as a moat to just keep it out of the living room and out of the entry because he knew I was showing up, so he's doing me a favor <laughs> and not <laughs> having the toilet water. That was <laughs> Sam, right? And then I had my own uh, room. There was it was a big heavy duty partying. Unless I'm mixing two different places. But no, yeah, that's it was it. it was a lot of hardcore partying, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I remember the next morning that guy was taking us to the radio, and it was like six thirty in the morning. And it right. was just awful hung over and everything and we make it through the radio and all I want to do is get back maybe have like a subway breakfast sandwich and then go back to bed and this drive home is taking like an hour longer <laughs> than the way there and I'm like what's going on Where, oh I thought I'd show you the Dillard's uh, headquarters and I'm like are you <laughs> out of your fucking mind like why would I want to see the Dillard's headquarters well it's a big thing here in Little Rock or whatever it's like, no, just take me back to the subway. Was it really a Dillard's headquarters? Yeah, it was the Dillard's headquarters. <laughs> was that that weird, bizarro Paul Simon guy? Yeah. Wow. Wait, what's a Paul Simon guy? He just yeah, is he a guy that looks owner. like Paul Simon. Oh, he looked like Jeff Paul Simon. something or other, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I and, think he uh, runs the, the, the club in Houston now. The it was club. a huge train wreck. Yeah, I mean, um, they went out of business, I think, a month later, mm-hmm. and they had just gone into business a month before we got there. They were like stealing credit cards or something. Well, they were giving out all all the booze to all their friends. Like somebody was like, hey, there's a comedy club. Let's just... Oh, yeah. Our buddy owns a comedy club. Let's go drink for free type thing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Henry was in a panic for one of the shows because he had lost his guitar got stolen. Oh, yeah, There's a sandwich shop next door. Oh, no, really? He left his guitar in there and... uh, and so he borrowed one from a local guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. And, uh, and then the <laughs> next day he opens his trunk, and he had just put it in his trunk. And <laughs> so I he was... had to, like, back out. Yeah, it turns out the guy is a good Samaritan, and oh, he felt yeah. he returned it. That's <laughs> right. I think I lied about it. I was like, ah, uh, yeah, the guy at the sandwich shop said somebody dropped off a guitar, and they don't know how they got it. <laughs> I had already come to terms with losing like, yeah, the thing. I was you like, know what, oh, Henry, man. I do now. Now I recall you putting it in your trunk. I was with you <laughs> I also <laughs> forgot. No, I think what happened is the guy put it in my trunk. Yeah, uh, yeah. He wanted to he return it. He got a key made to where it was. <laughs> rental car, just to but, be. Uh, yeah. That's like he, carrot he top for getting his trunk, too. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember, and there was that one show that I, I'll always remember. Um, just terrible, terrible. Like I guess late Saturday night show or whatever, and uh, I'm just bombing. I'm up there for like 40 minutes. I can't get any laughs at all, and it was kind of time for me to get off anyway. The people were just staring. There was just no connection. Right. And uh, there was a lady. I I made some joke like, "Well, I'm gonna make this the last song or something like that." And then, oh, you made her lady. Feel yeah, this lady in the this. audience <laughs> yells, "Good." And I, it just pissed me off so much. Right. I said, yeah. so I tried to be all polite. I was like, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I missed what you said, man. What what was that? And then she's like, kind of like re- reluctant to have the spotlight on her. Sure. Yeah. I said, good. Oh, good. Meaning, oh, you don't want to hear anymore. Oh, okay. So you, you didn't, you don't like it, I guess. She's <laughs> like, yeah. 
Okay, you know what? Um, hey, everybody. I, she doesn't like it. It doesn't seem like any of you guys like it. I'm not having a good time if you're not having a good time. Maybe this just wasn't meant to be, and I don't know. Maybe we should just call it a night. I'll, I'll see you later. And then I walked <laughs> off the stage. They're like, no, no, don't. No. And then everybody felt sorry for me. And then uh, they, they hated that lady. And then I went out in the front to sell my CDs. And I'll never forget, like, I had I had not sold any CDs the entire right. week. Right. And some big cowboy guy comes up to me. And he's like, hey, man. You know what? I don't really like the way that lady treated you, and I want to let you know that's not the way we are in this town. As a matter of fact, you know what? Why don't you give me one of those CDs? I think I'd like that. I'm going to take one of those CDs. You know, <laughs> give me two. I'm going to give one to my brother. I think he'll enjoy that. Don't don't listen to what that lady said. And then the lady's like walking out in shame, right. and everybody's just going, what an awful rude person. <laughs> and I wound up selling a whole bunch of CDs because people felt sorry yeah, for I me. remember that. I That's exactly what happened. Yeah, and I wanted to be like... Wow, maybe I should do that every time. <laughs> Just have people Great. feel sorry for me every time. Do you, you have know? a song that's a go-to when it's not going well? Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, I have a lot more stand-up nowadays, so and a lot uh -huh. more one-liners, so that you can always sort of do that. But not to sound like a dick, but it hasn't not gone well for a while, so oh, I don't remember well, what I used to do. Well, <laughs> Brother, no. wow, wow. Yeah. Guess, I'll talk, guess I'll talk to Fairbanks. No, I, no, I think I think those early years, you're always trying to figure out uh, what kind of material to do for which audiences and whatever, and that's what I was struggling with because I was coming from L.A. where everybody just was anticipating jokes, Yeah. whereas in a comedy club with just regular people, you just had to sort of spell it out a little bit more, and it mm -hmm. took me a while to iron that out. I used to start with like two minutes of no jokes whatsoever just a complete troll trying to get people to think that it was a real singer songwriter and then oh, it really? sort of slowly turn into like oh this is a gag and that was tough yeah to do on the road that was really difficult so started just but nowadays i open with like maybe 15 minutes of stand-up mm -hmm. and then i just pick up the guitar and do a few songs but yeah if there's ever a lull i'll i'll try to um yeah, I have a couple one-liners up my mm. sleeves that I can pull out. Or there's my end of the world song is usually a, mm -hmm. a party getter. Now do you <laughs> get the party? <laughs> the end. Do of the you world. stand up or are you sitting down on the stool? Um, you know what? I change it up. Oh, Sometimes well. I'll that's how you keep it exciting, up. Chris. Take notes. Yeah, and then I'll take a stool and I'll sit on it for a couple of uh, songs, and then I'll get up and. So it's a different show every time. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the same exact thing. <laughs> Just a different town. <laughs> well, what are you keeping busy then doing since you don't want to go out on the road? Anymore, I am on Chris? the road. I just don't. It's uh, I'm not going to list the cities. I do go, and it goes well when I do it. I wasn't and asking just you to tired list of, the cities. I'm tired of uh, doing it, though. Okay. It's just like, no. All right. <laughs> so I've been acting in commercials. All right, they're good. That was, I, I asked, what are you doing besides going on the road? Oh, man, I love getting in a fight with a host of <laughs> podcasts. It's the best. People love listening to it. So. I, uh, yeah, I'm uh, hosting a TV show, and that got canceled. And then, uh, yeah, get acting work uh, and pay bills with that. All right, good. We insurance. just did a video together. Yeah, what was the video? It's uh, Henry's Kitchen. and uh, Of course, Henry's holiday, Kitchen is great. Holiday fish stew. And uh, it's going to come out, uh, I guess, tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! If you, I'll put uh, I'll put a couple of clips on the I website. I think it's gonna be really funny. Yeah, that's great. Um, I've been having these Airbnb guests and Chris mm -hmm. and Melissa McQueen. Do you know Melissa McQueen? She's great. impressionist. Uh, yeah, for lack of better do words. I don't yeah, wanna, she's. Great. I don't want to paint a with a big brush, but she does it very well. Yeah, yeah. she. I just like she, I became friends with her on Facebook. Is she new to town? Has she been around? No, a while? she's no, been she's around been around, around forever. Yeah. Okay, I remember when I first moved here, we both were managed by Dave Rath, and we went to the Christmas party. Oh, okay. And Dave had a way of like he had like hundreds of clients, even though he said ah, I have like twelve. And we went to the Christmas party, and he went up and introduced himself to her with. And she's like, no, I know, you're my manager. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that was really, that was really the best. <laughs> that's so you know, great. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> that's but I, like, messed I up. like Dave. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, so what, tell us a little bit about uh, the second Punching the Clown coming in, which oh, is yeah. the name oh, changed. So right? called, uh, this movie. I, yeah, now I saw the first Punching one. Henry. I haven't seen the second one. Yeah, no, Chris is in it, too. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, we've got uh Give us a little Sarah backstory. Uh, a little backstory on Punching well, the Clown. Well, it's... Uh, 
there are a lot more road stories in this one. There's mm-hmm. a whole uh, third act where it basically takes place on a little Northern California, Nevada mini tour, you know? And uh, yeah, like Carson City. And, and it's based, that whole section is based on one weekend that I had up there, uh-huh. you know, where there was just so many things going wrong. And, um, but yeah, th- there was a little bit of a demand for making a sequel to the movie because even though the first one wasn't a financial success, mm-hmm. a lot of people saw it and a lot of um, pe- Aaron shaking his head. He saw uh, it. He loved yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. And uh, yeah, people um, like in high places, like uh, Mike Judge, you mm-hmm. know, was a fan of it, and apparently oh, cool. he would show it to all of his friends and everything. And then when the c- time came to make the movie. Uh, obviously you have to have a celebrity. That's just, unfortunately, that's the way it works right. because otherwise people don't go if they don't know who any of the people in it are. So somebody sent out an email to um, J.K. Simmons and a whole bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it was generally like, you know, like Danny DeVito. It's like, hey, do you want to do this independent film? And it would be like his agent saying, um, not sure if you know, but Danny DeVito is fucking famous. Like, why would he want to do your movie? <laughs> Stop insulting us with this shit. But J.K. Simmons, believe it or not, was the one guy uh, who his agent said, you know what, he's kind of interested. Oh, cool. And, and it's right before he got a Golden Globe and an mm-hmm. Oscar. Yeah. So like... But he had already done the, the movie Whiplash. It was actually out at the time. And... uh and so I sent an email to Mike Judge and was just like, I hate doing this. I, I'm not very good at asking people, you mm-hmm. know, for favors like that. But I knew that he was a fan of the movie and I knew that they were an extra or he made extract and so that they were probably friends. Right, right. And yeah, Mike Judge wrote a fantastic uh, email to J.K. Simmons just saying, you got to see the first movie, read the script for the second one. You'll have a good time. And that was it. That oh, was that's it. awesome. So J.K. Simmons came on board. And uh, and also Sarah Silverman, who was mm-hmm. always a huge fan of the first one. Sure. She plays this podcaster that goes throughout, and she's great. Tig Notaro. Actually, I think we showed, we all watched the movie with Tig the first time back in like 2008 or mm-hmm. 2009 or something when they were roommates. Uh-huh. And um, I was looking at Chris when I said that. I realized we're on <laughs> audio, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I have no idea who I'm talking to. But... Um, yeah, so it, it just all these people kind of came, came stepped up and awesome. were just like, yeah, uh, let's do it, you know. And um, so there's probably about 50 characters in there, and at least 30 of them are comics. You know, Matt yeah, Kirshen yeah. and oh, Mike awesome. Kaplan, and uh, I, I don't want to start naming them because then I'm going to sure. leave so many out. But no, no, that's fine. Jim Jeffries, Doug Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty they cool. Are, they are all in it. That <laughs> that's was... great. And now that premiered at South by Southwest, Yeah, right? yeah. How was that? And, I never, uh, I've always wanted to go. Have you ever done South by Southwest? Uh, it's weird because that's sort of my comedy hometown right. in Austin, and, and it's hard it's hard yeah. to get in, or I've done it twice. Yeah, okay, and it's been very fun. But okay. I'd, I'd I, love I, to go again, but it's hard to get in. I it was it was basically just such a clusterfuck that I don't know if I'm just too old for that kind of right. thing or whatever. But I, I all I wanted to do the whole time was just go to some mellow divey bar outside of the area and just hang out with friends and tell stories and stuff. It was just a madhouse, but yeah, and it's hard I think uh, with your movie there to get any kind of press or any word of mouth or get people to show up to the screenings mm-hmm. because there's just so much going on and people just will do what they do. And, um, I, I felt like it was different. The first movie, uh, more of a, um, what would you say? Big fish in a little pond kind of a situation. Sure. Whereas I felt like it's South by Southwest. We got lost. And one of, one of the things that we found out is that the name didn't work. We, we called it and punching the clown, thinking mm-hmm. it would be funny because there's a whole subplot in the movie where they're trying to uh, come up with a TV show and they find out about something called alpha stacking, where if you call your movie, movie something that starts with an A, or yeah, yeah. Right, then, right. then you get listed first in like the oh. VOD listings. Like <laughs> yes, if you're on the plane, it says like A to C. But they were whatever. serious. The producers oh, yeah. really did want to. They know really that. thought that was a good idea. And so, <laughs> and punching the clown was this kind of like double <laughs> funny, like inside thing. And then there was a moment there where I like, like I told my Uber driver about it and he couldn't stop laughing about it and all this <laughs> stuff. And uh, I thought it'd be a funny panel story. Like, well, we wanted to call it 
Ah, punch you in the cloud, <laughs> but we couldn't do that. But anyway, uh, it was just too confusing. And right. the worst part is a lot of people kept on thinking, oh, I already saw that movie. Oh, yeah, they, of course. They thought it was the one that they saw several years ago. Because the sense. word and is just not enough to change the movie. <laughs> like, you can't call something like, you know, I don't know, and Schindler's List right. and expect people to think it's not the same movie. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's um, a, it's so, like, that's, I heard a, I heard a, a comic, I guess, or a manager on an interview one time talking about naming the tracks on your album. Yeah. And I feel bad because a friend of mine did this, but he didn't do it for this reason. He did it for a completely different okay. reason. And it's naming the tracks on your album. You name your tracks popular songs. Oh, okay. Oh, weird. So that people will be like, oh. Uh, They'll download it by accident. Yeah, back in black. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. download. And then it's oh, that sucks. So Chris they, Fairbanks yeah. talking about his <laughs> sleeves or something. Who, who did that? <laughs> that sounds <laughs> awful. Oh, man. Stairway to heaven. Right. Yeah, and um, then you trick them into hearing your stuff. And yeah. then they're like, hey, you're this like, is just I'm as good as I'm on the stairway to heaven. <laughs> yeah. Hey. If they want to hear Led Zeppelin and it's a story about right before your mom died, <laughs> it's a two-story <laughs> hospital. Yeah. Now, there was I won't mention his name, but down. a good a good friend of ours did that, but he didn't do it for that reason. He did it because he does. If he did it as a joke, that's yeah. He did it for another reason, so yeah. I don't want to bag on. Oh him. no, of course, of course, it is. It's but a that really marketing kind of no, yeah, is, that's that would have been exactly a funny thing to put right. in our movie. <laughs> you know what? I inadvertently did it. Oh wow! I yeah, because uh, when I recorded my album, I went off on a rant on Blink One Eighty Two, mm-hmm. and it got a really good response. So I just left it on my CD. Yeah, and I named it Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, and it's my most downloaded. Oh yeah, track. isn't that funny? No, and, of course. And the, the people are like, "Oh, I like," and then they hear me shitting on Blink One Eighty Two. So I inadvertently, heard. I'm inadvertently the douchebag. Yeah, just no. Well, about. that's the thing <laughs> with the and punch in the clown. We actually were the beneficiaries of it because, mm-hmm. sure enough, like in. In a newspaper article, there was, like, things to watch in South by Southwest, and there's, like, 15 movies. Ours was first. Oh, right on. And so it's sort of like, oh, I get it. It really does work. But it also is a pretty cheesy move because you're you're kind of admitting that your movie isn't good enough that people are going to like it anyway. You have to, like... <laughs> Do little tricks and stuff. Right. And I did the. I'm glad you changed it. I just that sound and punching the clown. It's almost like you want to go. What? It, what is it called again? Right. Like it's like a collection of words that don't. Yeah. I. Why would? Yeah. Or another made more sense, wasn't it? Well, another, the whole another punching the, the whole point of it yeah. was that it was supposed to sound stupid. Be- if you see the movie, sure. all of a yeah, sudden yeah, it yeah. totally makes sense because it's supposed to be. So dumb that the only good thing about it is is starting with the right, name. Right, but, right. But it's too hard to name your actual movie that because people will <laughs> <laughs> they'll just not go. I really like ah. Uh, I know yeah, I like yeah. that. And you cover all the A's and like yeah. you know because you can't go ab a b because well, you got the apparently a, a, a. numbers like are come even earlier. Really, so the way to go is like zero 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 zero. Point one or whatever. <laughs> yeah, here's my album. It's called Ten Monkeys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, when does it come out? You just got uh, February twenty fourth. Right? Yeah, awesome. In theaters uh, in digital, theaters. Everything. Really? Yeah, Excellent. the whole bit. That's exciting. Yeah. And what about really digital excited. platforms? Uh, yeah, it'll it'll be I just February twenty fourth. Yeah. For the first time in my life, <laughs> somebody, anybody want to punch <laughs> me in the face right now? <laughs> oh, the same thing. You know, what it, about it'll streaming be, uh... avenues? <laughs> you thought about streaming avenues? <laughs> yeah, uh, multi platform, uh, VOD. Yeah, so it'll be yeah, uh, Xbox and iTunes and awesome. Amazon and all that stuff. Uh, cool. February twenty fourth, Netflix. I. I hope it eventually sure. ends up on Netflix because that's great exposure. I don't know. Uh, I think it's a big mystery how to get stuff on Netflix. Netflix is going through a big weird change right now, and Amazon is stepping up. I know a couple people yeah. who, who had a deal with Netflix or had a deal with Amazon but and were promised Netflix, but now they're competing, so they've lost their specials on Netflix and stuff. So. Well, I love Amazon. I think it's great. Yeah, they and, a lot and of great stuff. A, as an independent guy, you can put your stuff on Amazon through CreateSpace. So our movie, Punching the Clown, the first one, it's only on Amazon. That's oh, really? That's the way to see it. Oh, well, perfect. You have till yeah. February 24th to watch Punching yeah. the Clown on exactly. Amazon. That's awesome. And then this is five years later, which I got to say, though, we, we designed it so that you wouldn't have to see the first movie sure. to, to know anything about it. Yeah. But see the so. first movie anyway. Yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, see the first I'm movie. chiming hey. in. I'm chiming in because he's my friend and I know some of this stuff. Not, I, I have nothing to do with the movie other than being in it for a second. 
Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> when I keep, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. Wait, what am I? Sorry, I just uh, when been, we got J.K. Simmons. I mean, no, the actually, yeah, yeah. Chris's scene is great. <laughs> yeah, it's, he plays uh, a rural uh, truck driver. I don't I'm think sure. it's any coincidence Not that uh, we're both. From Missoula, Montana. So that's right. oh, I had no Thank idea me. you were from. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. No, no, uh, J.K. Simmons. I yeah, yeah. Oh, J.K.'s from Missoula. Spoke at my college when I graduated. I'm like, why is this actor who isn't uh, that well known yet speaking at the college? Oh, all right. Yeah. We have listeners from Missoula. When you get so. famous, I will say everybody claims you. I'm waiting for it to happen for me because <laughs> it's going to be like Englewood, New Jersey. All of a sudden, I'll be like, "Yeah, this is his hometown." Well, I was there for three years. <laughs> uh, That's what my town in New Jersey did. Pequonic, yeah. Van Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Derek Jeter was born there oh, and then yeah. moved out at like six months. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. God damn it, they'll tell you every <laughs> every conversation you have with them. Yeah, yeah. Australia tried to claim Mel Gibson. He was oh. only there like four or five years. Oh, is that really? true? Is that, oh, really? I always York. assumed he was a stripper. Yeah, me too. Wow, I never knew that. Oh, wow. Yeah. No? He's Why born, he have, he had he's a born in New York. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. I wow. moved when he was 12. He's so many surprises with that fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the least um, controversial ones. All right, guys. So uh, we got Punch of the Cloud. Chris, what's coming up with you? Uh, I'm going follow to... Chris on Instagram. You're, I love the pictures you put up on oh, there, thanks, by the way. Thanks. I just joined Instagram. That's why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been doing these. Uh, well, it's, there's like these accidental videos that I've been doing where I'm just trying to uh, get navigated or go to WebMD and figure out why I have a rash, but the camera's <laughs> accidentally on. So it's all these accidental sure. video recordings. Kind of have to see it on uh, Instagram. Yeah, but it's funny. It's like, who am I reaching uh, with that other than the people already following me on Instagram? But maybe word will hit the streets. <laughs> That's uh, the way it always is. Yeah. Yeah, and then you basically uh, have your fan base and you're hoping that they tell people. I'm going to Denver. That's a place I like to go. Minneapolis, Comedy works. That's a place I like to go. No, I don't. Cl clubs? No, thanks. All I right. just go just What's in deal at a place and figure that you can make more money. Yeah, no, way. I've been doing Comedy a lot clubs, of that lately. There's no reason to do them. I, this goes out to all you comedy clubs. What Minneapolis? <laughs> We're working you around do? you, and you're going to go out of business. Uh -huh. And uh, I'd like to. Last time I was in Denver, I ran into this girl that I uh, I hadn't seen for like twelve years, and uh, I remembered twelve years prior we were. Uh, I was with a f group of friends, like two friends, and they had girlfriends. I'm about to tell a story. Is that all right? Or Please are we do. Wrapping up. No, go ahead. Uh, and. Uh, they, she was really rich. She lived in Denver, and she like lived on. They lived on like a polo court. Like there's actual horses and people play polo in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. I've since not found this place, but we were. I was there twelve years ago, and uh, and she, she had. They had like butlers, and her parents didn't talk to her and stuff. It was a big fancy house, and we were uncomfortable. And so she said, "Well, we have a cabin, but it it was winter." And she was like, "We." There was no plumbing up there, though. We had to turn off the water because the pipes will freeze and explode. So uh, we can go up there, but you have to go to the bathroom now. And I'm like, I don't have to go to the bathroom now. Plus, I'm a grown-up. <laughs> don't tell me when to poop and pee. <laughs> and then we all got in this car, and we drove up up this mountain. And it it was – this cabin was a house. It was a beautiful right, house right. that they called a cabin. They're like, oh, we can rough it up at the cabin. But it was a four-story beautiful house. <laughs> But it was, it was, there were snow drifts like blowing over it. No one had been there for a long time. The plumbing was off and I did have to shit right when I got there. Like I had to go to the bathroom and they were just playing board games. And I was pacing around. Uh, it was, I think I had colitis at the time or something like that. And she, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go. I didn't want to tell them. Right. So, so I went outside and I shat in the snow drift. <laughs> And then I came in, and they all had gone off, to, I think, to make out or something. But I was chatting, I'm like, are you guys done? Like, I walked around the cabin to see uh, if anyone was still awake. And then in the morning, she was screaming because someone had tracked human shit throughout the entire cabin. It was me. There was, like, <laughs> white shag. And it wasn't like it was just I got a little bit on my boot. Right. It was, like, full. I don't know how. It was like I took a paint roller. Oh, jeez. And covered these boots, and just there's just a perforated line through the whole cabin. Oh, like man. me trying to go to every room. I can't believe how much I shit I tried. <laughs> how, and I, how and much I, ground you covered? It was unbelievable. <laughs> I and but they didn't somehow. It wasn't known that it was that it was you. That was me. Yeah, and that was my human shit. I cleaned. I'm like that's guilty right away. I'm like, right. oh, I'll clean it. They had all this resolve, so I. 
clean the carpet. And uh, they, I didn't hear about it for the rest of that trip. I remember I was like, wow, I dodged that bullet. But I couldn't remember what I, how I got out of it. Uh, and But then when I saw her this last time, she was like, oh, remember up at the cabin when you stepped in wolf shit? I, I guess I had convinced them all. <laughs> That I'd stepped in wolf shit, so it's my, oh, that's the great. First, yeah, I totally cried wolf shit. So Chris will be in Denver when? Um, that is, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't. I'm so sure. your website. Mid, you go to your website. It's yeah. Go to my website. I do mean, you, wait. Do you still talk to that girl? Minneapolis, or no? mid January, um, January fifteenth. Perfect 16th, time to go. Seventeenth. Yeah, yeah, it's freezing. Oh, I go yeah. to places when they're negative nine. Absolutely degrees. frozen. Right. That's when I like to. I do like winter. No, right. last time I went That'd to fun. Montana. You know, my uh, my parents live in Bozeman now. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was negative thirty. Yeah, it's. I'm about to go up. Yeah, there. it's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. I'm okay with that. So check out Chris Fairbanks on Instagram. Check out chrisfairbanks.com, right? Twitter, the whole nine yards. Sure. Right yeah. on. Yeah, it's I mean, all I'm my digging name. your sub pop hat. All my name, all my name, no spaces, no underscores, no right. periods. And Henry Phillips, we got punching the clock. Yeah. And wait, Punch and Henry Phillips. Uh, wait, Punching the, Henry. Punch and Henry. Okay. Yeah, that's February. And then also, probably by the time that this comes out, you can see uh, the video that Chris and I just made uh, the Henry's Kitchen uh, Holiday Fish Stew. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, awesome. It's really probably exciting. out right now on your YouTube. Excellent. And I'll put a link to that it. on the. Uh... I feel like I'm talking in the future. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll put a link to that on our website. Okay. On, on the, on the uh, Murray Blariano Comedy Facebook page. I've combined everything to one Facebook page. Great. Now. That nobody goes to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear you. Well, first of all, it's always good seeing you guys. Yeah. I don't get to see you guys thanks nearly enough, us, man. I'm a huge fan of both of you, oh, and thanks, uh, I'm glad we're friends. It's cool to have such talented friends. In case you were worried, uh, your house is fine. I went to that place first. <laughs> I oh, was just he used to record. I was it. just about to apologize no, to you. No, I f- I forgot. You we even had the text yeah. exchange, and I just went straight to your just house instinctively. <laughs> like, huh? I got out. I'm like, what am I doing? Oh, <laughs> I was just man. sorry because I didn't realize you lived in Venice. Oh yeah, and I'm an idiot because I've only I've known always... you ten years, and you've only lived there twelve. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm a complete moron. No, so I apologize. You trekking no, all the way across okay. town. I come here a lot. Okay, good. Uh, Henry Phillips, Chris Fairbanks. Uh, check out these guys when they come to your town. Very funny. Thanks for listening. I actually have to be in Venice in the next 20 minutes. I'll take you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take you. That's you want to know about life on the road. Up. It's booze, tacos, angry dwarfs, strippers waving guns. And these fights, cancel flights, running with the runs. And blacklists, bounce checks, great a bachelorette. <laughs> Drunks in the front, making out for your set. And middle acts doing blow more missing merch. And drive the rental car past another mega church. And juice keys, vagina fist, your cell phone is gone. One big law and order marathon.